Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I am Kimberly Dinwiddie, the Public Information Officer with Clackamas County. And we're here this afternoon to bring you up to date on the latest evacuation levels, provide you a update on the wildfires burning in Clackamas County, and explain what the county is doing to help you and other people who've suffered from these devastating fires. We have about a half an hour, so we'll begin with speakers explaining the latest information and end with a Q&A session with the media. I'd like to introduce Clackamas County Commissioner Martha Schrader. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Clackamas County Commissioner Martha Schrader. I'm the vice chair of the commission this year. I'm here to tell you that we are slowly making progress. This morning, the county reduced the evacuation levels in several areas, including Estacada, from level two to level one, from being set to evacuate to the lower level of preparedness. The sheriff will have more details in a moment. More and more each day, our county is beginning to return to normal. But make no mistake, we have a very long way to go. Almost 5,000 Clackamas County residents still cannot go back to their home yet because the fires are still burning. In the last few days, I had the opportunity to visit the Malala area, and I've seen firsthand how people are hurting. I, as well as my colleagues, are absolutely committed to make sure we help you in your recovery. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. Your world has been turned upside down, and I want to reassure you that Clackamas County will be and will continue to be here for you. Relief and support efforts have ramped up as the list of needs grows, and our wonderful caring community is answering the call on many fronts. Volunteers, all county departments, and other government partners are working together to support you. They are providing shelter, emergency housing, food, animal care, donations, emotional and mental health support, and much more. These are the people working together to help their neighbors, family members, and even strangers. This volunteer effort is the epitome of the positive force we need in this world. This is the case here in our county. We are a resilient county. We are resilient people. So many of us are caring and refuse to idly stand by while our neighbors need help. And we will all go through this together. Thank you. And I believe we have another speaker coming up. I believe it's... Clackamas County Sheriff Craig Roberts will now supply the details on the latest changes in evacuation levels. Sheriff. Again, uh, my name is Craig Roberts, Sheriff with Clackamas County, and uh, just have to say the wildfires in Clackamas County have uh, now been burning for two weeks. And you know, I was pleased to see the rain. It has helped uh, with the firefighting efforts. And I want to extend my thanks to the residents of Clackamas County that uh, uh, have been patient. Um, we're excited to get so many back into your home. And also extending you know, my uh, uh, sadness for those that have not been able to return to their homes for the damages. And I want you to know that uh, we stand with you. We want to be there to help you through this uh, difficult time. And again, I would refer you to the uh, resources at the Clackamas County's website. Today I have some important announcements related to the evacuation zones and the curfew that are now in place. We have some significant changes to the evacuation levels and they are the area of Wilhoit uh, fire has been returned to level one. The immediate areas surrounding the Dowdy fire and the Unger fire and the Riverside fire remain at level three. The Estacada is now in a level one and Malala has now been returned to regular status, meaning they are not activated to any level. The Mounted National Forest remains closed, and one of the things I cannot encourage enough is we're asking people to stay out of a level three evacuation areas for the safety of our emergency workers. 
The curfew begins at 10 p.m. and continues until 6 a.m. 6 a.m. and it only applies to the level three zones. One of the things I want to reassure the public about is the evacuation areas continue to have heavy patrol staffing levels by our office and other agencies that are stepping up to help us. I want to give you an update on some of the arrests we've made over the weekend. There, are, there were uh, six new crime reports in the fire affected area this past weekend. So as of today, between September 8th through the 21st, we've made 22 arrests and taken 54 crime reports. The reported crimes this weekend were burglary, arson, and theft. Also want to uh, announce that we're investigating two suspicious fires. One was a vehicle fire and one was a barn fire. The vehicle fire is currently under investigation. We do have a person of interest identified and our detectives are actively investing in that case. I'm also pleased to report that I just spoke earlier uh, this afternoon with one of our detectives and learned that they made an arrest for an arson two in the case of a barn fire. The suspect's 14 years old. This case is being referred to the juvenile department. I want to make it perfectly clear that these two fires are not connected to larger wildfires. Furthermore, there's no evidence to show any connection to any group or organization. Again, I encourage the public, if they have, see suspicious vehicles or individuals in the community, call 911. Our response time is right now approximately three minutes. And again, it's uh, an incredible amount of patrol out there keeping our communities safe. Our focus continues to remain on keeping you and your loved ones safe and protecting your properties while you're not there. I want to say one of the reasons I believe we haven't seen the huge escalation report of crimes that we really kind of anticipated is one, because of the increased staffing levels that we had. We really put countless people on overtime, extended to 12 hour shifts, and people were working literally around the clock to make sure we we're keeping residences safe. But it wasn't only that, it was citizens calling 91 to be the eyes and ears out there to make sure that anything that looks suspicious we were responding to. So my thanks to our residents that uh, stepped up and did that. So in closing, one of the things I, I just have to tell you that personally, I have been all over this county in the last two weeks, talked to tons of people, uh, worked very closely with Alan and his incredible team, uh, Forest Service fire individuals, and one group that uh, has also stepped into this area to help in countless ways and, and hasn't been mentioned, I just have to say is um, our faith-based organizations has, has just been incredibly supportive. Our chaplain, Mike Vermes, has stepped up and there's been a tremendous amount of partnership built along that way. And what I saw is, I just have to tell you, a huge response from the local churches in Estacada, Malala, Colton, and all those individuals stepped up. But what's really even more touching is, is seeing churches come throughout uh, Clackamas County and beyond. And I couldn't go into the entire list of all those, but just to mention Athe Creek Community Church, Willamette Christian Church, and the list literally goes on and on, that those churches came together uh, as a community and provide an invaluable resource for the citizens in our county. So my thanks to those individuals and we will keep you updated as things change. Thank you. Michael Cheek with the North Carolina Incident Management Team responding to the Clackamas County wildfires will now provide an update on the Dowdy, Unger, and Will Hoyt fires. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Michael Cheek. I'm the Deputy Incident Commander for the North Carolina Type 2 Incident, Incident Management Team that is here working with the Oregon uh, Department of Forestry on managing the Clackamas County fires that include uh, Dowdy, Unger, Will Hoyt, and the Graves Creek fires. That's about a total of 2,584 acres. Um, currently, we have about 283 firefighters working on these fires. Um, we're roughly at about 56% containment. We, uh, that containment number keeps uh, bumping up every day. Uh, guys are doing a lot of good work 
trying to mop up and contain and hold these fires in place. There hasn't been any movement in these fires in the last two days, so they're doing a great job there. Um, we are also assisting the Oregon Department of Forestry in initial attack of new fires in the Clackamas County area, uh, which generally speaking, the last few days is averaging about three new fires a day that we're responding to. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Alan Sinclair with the Southwest Incident Management Team 1 to provide us the latest update on the Riverside Fire. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Alan Sinclair, Incident Commander for Southwest Area Team Number 1. Got some good news. Our percent of containment is now at 25%. Um, the crews have done a, an outstanding job working on the, the west side of the incident, um, really getting in the lines that are protecting the communities of Malala, Colton, and on up to Estacada, and then around the north end of the fire. So, you know, we're going to start seeing that containment number increase each day as they really secure those lines, but they do have a, a control line in. They're still continuing to mop up that line, um, looking for any sources of heat that could um, be a, an issue if we got a win. So they're, they're patrolling the lines, they're mopping them up, but 25% containment and, and a lot of good work to get, get that side of the fire um, in place with a line. Um, it's our 11th day here and uh, it's been um, just a, a, a very unique experience being here, and I really appreciate all the folks that have come together. As the Sheriff mentioned, there's just a, a, a lot of folks that have been out there helping each other out, and we appreciate that. Um, with that, that's the update, 25% containment. Thank you. So we can't forget that we are still in a pandemic. So we've asked our uh, Clackamas County Public Health Division Director, Philip Mason Joyner, to talk about that and provide the latest update. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm Philip Mason Joyner, the Public Health Director with Clackamas County and one of our incident commanders in our county's emergency operations center. We were really thrilled over the past few days to see improvement of our air quality, um, making it easier to breathe for a whole lot of our residents, although uh, it's still hovering in the unhealthy range for some of our, our sensitive groups in, in the area. Uh, you can monitor the current air quality by going to our wildfire web, website at uh, clackamas.us or by visiting airnow Gov. And it's also really important to remember that the COVID-19 pandemic has not ended. Um, over the weekend, we did see an uptake in cases both locally and within the state. We are also entering flu season, and I really want to urge everyone to please go and get your flu shot. Um, the, the vaccine is readily available in clinics and in pharmacies across the region. Our guidance related to prevention of the spread of COVID-19 remains the same. Don't touch your face. Wash your hands frequently with warm and soapy water. And if that's unavailable, use hand sanitizer. Wear a mask at all times when you're not uh, at your home and you're, you're in contact with others outside of your household. And then continue to practice physical distancing. Uh, specifically to the fires, if you were in isolation or quarantine due to COVID-19 and you had to evacuate, you should have been contacted by us at the health department. We contacted over 60 um, households to provide them with guidance and support for how to evacuate safely. If you haven't gotten in touch with us yet, please do so. We want to build Friday with guidance on what you can do to continue to keep yourself and others safe. Thank you. And Clackamas County Disaster Management Director Nancy Bush has uh, today's final update. 
Good afternoon. I am Nancy Bush. I'm the Disaster Management Director here at Clackamas County, and thank you for joining us today. With the slightest change in evacuation levels, as Commissioner Schrader said, we're here to support the peoples whose homes have been damaged or destroyed. Right now, we are actively assessing structural damage and resource needs as people are returning to their homes. FEMA is now on site and is assisting us, and we will continue coordinating individual assistance during what we call the reentry stage. It's important for you to know where to get help. Our county website has, the, has great information, so please visit clackamas.us slash wildfires. We have links to seek assistance for home repair loans, wildfire damage, housing relief, FEMA housing assistance, links to help you replace food lost in the disaster, and much more. We're constantly updating our site, so please check back frequently to see if it has changed. We're making plans to open community resource centers in the coming days in areas that have recently been moved from a level two to a level one evacuation areas with our partners at FEMA. We're also sharing information with community resource centers already established in Estacada and Moala. To get in touch with the local Red Cross, please visit redcross.org slash local slash Oregon. Again, the most comprehensive list of resources is at our website at clackamas.us slash wildfires. I do wanna thank all of our partners for your exceptional corporate cooperation. Your willingness to support us and our Clackamas County residents has truly, truly been remarkable. This is teamwork that we don't see often and without this teamwork, we would not be able to get through this. In closing, I urge you to sign up again for public alerts, which we talk about each time. Go to our Clackamas County webpage at clackamas.us and follow the prompts there. This will not only assist you in this particular disaster, but also for future disasters. Thank you and take care. Clackamas County plans to host a community meeting online tomorrow uh, via Facebook. And we're asking people to um, ask their questions in the Facebook chat and you'll hear directly from our uh, experts on recovery as well as an update on the fire and what you need to do when you um, return home. We also, uh, the Clackamas County Board of Co County Commissioners is also really interested in hearing about how you have been directly affected by the fire. And they are hosting a listening session online uh, Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. and you could access that listening session and per, um, share your experiences directly with the commissioners at that time. So we do have some time for questions and do we have any questions from the media that we received online? No. Okay, no questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, with that, we will wrap up today's briefing. Thank you for joining us and please stay safe.